Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Dais, a podcast about the stories taking place in and around El Paso County, Colorado. I'm your host, Scott Anderson, and today I am joined by Lisa Jenkins, the founder and CEO for Kingdom Builders. How are you doing today, Lisa? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me here today. I really appreciate it. Of course. Uh, So before we get started, I want to quickly add that if listeners are interested in more stories about people doing good in and around El Paso County, or hearing from county leadership about local government priorities and how they operate, you can find additional episodes of this podcast on your podcast platform of choice. Uh, But to get started today, Lisa, I was wondering if you could share some background about yourself and how you came to be associated here with Kingdom Builders. Of course. Um, I am, of course, the founder. And 10 years ago, um, this past April, made 10 years that the organization became we, what we're doing that right now. Um, it was a long struggle. I was a single parent at 24 when I left my first marriage. was very abusive. And during that time period, I have now my three small children. I was able to escape with my life. And that kind of started my journey of really wanting to support survivors um, of domestic violence, being able to overcome their adversities, and just being able to thrive. So I... Um, started my journey um, of wanting to do this when I was much older because I had to live life. I had to raise three children um, and then also just kind of navigate the diversities of being a single parent. Um, but I was able to do that. And so my um, now husband that we've been together now over 21 years or so. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I did, told him about my desire to be able to start an organization to help. And he was very supportive. And 2013 is when we decided to launch that journey together, um, and it's been amazing. And so that's kind of been my story of why I started the organization um, and where we are right now. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Uh, so can you share some background about Kingdom Builders itself and what the main mission of that organization is? Absolutely. Our mission is committed. We're committed to changing the narrative for those that have been affected by domestic violence, sexual assault, and human trafficking. We work with both the adults, youth, and also the families of, to be, that have been indirectly affected by it. So we do that in a lot of ways. We um, provide case management advocacy. We do a lot of mentoring, education, and then a lot of supportive services so that they can overcome those struggles and challenges that they have and be able to one day thrive. Awesome. Yeah, no, that, that sounds incredible. So approximately how many people do you serve and in what communities do you serve mm-hmm. here in the region? Yeah, we do El Paso and t- also Taylor Counties is our footprint. And we are able, to, so I guess yesterday we did a calculation. So 2019 was when we received our first um, victim services funding to actually provide direct support for victims. And since that time period, we've served 437 uh, individuals. Um, and families that have been affected by domestic violence and sexual assault. Very good. And I, I want to ask this because Kingdom Builders is located in a pretty unique location. Uh, here, we're at the Satellite Hotel. Mm-hmm. I, it's a place that I had never been before, but is, uh, again, pretty unique in uh, what it is and how it operates. Can you talk a little bit about how you ended up here at the Satellite Hotel? Absolutely. Um, when we first started this journey, we knew that we wanted to be on, in, on Academy, just because of how um, popular the streets is, the bus routes are there. And so anyone that would need support would be able to get to us. So we we were able to um, purchase and lease our first um, office space um, in 20, I think it was 2018, mm-hmm. um, April 2018. Um, we had one space and then we now have 12 spaces on the second floor and then we have five that's on the first floor. Um, and it was strategic for us because we want to not have any barriers for survivors to be able to get support. And so having it in a centralized location in the Southeast area where we do provide support for a lot of survivors in this area, um, it was just important for us to be able to be accessible. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we decided to and are still here in the satellite. Very good. No, that, that's really interesting. So can you talk about how important it is for Kingdom Builders itself to be viewed as a place that the community can turn to in their time of need? Absolutely. This knowing the impact that we have been able to um, provide um, survivors and also family members. And we have a, my personal story. Um, a lot of my um, other staff, they are also survivors or have been children of, of um families that's been affected by these topics. So it was important for us to be able to give that relational when, when people come in and they are able to identify that we understand 
rather than just saying that we understand. Right, right. Um, and we have that personal um, story to be able to back it up. And then also the experience in education. For all of my staff, we've been in the advocacy. Myself, personally, I've been doing this, um, working in advocacy for probably about close to 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then my education allows me to be able to see beyond just an individual. And we help every individual based on what they say they need at that time. So everyone yeah. is different. So yeah. um, we're excited about, you know, what we've been able to do and then also moving forward in the future. How, I, I guess, how valuable is it to have a staff like that, that, that knows not, you know, you can, I don't think you can know exactly how someone feels, but if you've been through something similar, you can, you know, you know, generally and, and can speak to a lot of the things that people have been through or experienced for themselves. What have you seen in your staff that has really, I guess, reaffirmed to you that, you know, this is the way to do things and, and this is working for us and we're seeing success in the mm -hmm. people that we're helping. I think we, um, we have the empathy, but we also have very passionate about what we do. Um, it's so important for us to be able to, in order to change narratives and lives, we have to give them something different than they've been exposed to before so strategically when it, when you walk through each one of our doors is decorated in a way that is very inviting we provide that one-on-one um, -on -one support that they know I'm safe when I come in um, they take a lot of time of addressing my immediate needs because you know when we look at a, a survivor and how successful they're going to be after they've gotten out of that situation it's all going to be that support system that they have that can really support them. And so we do a great job of just providing that um, love and support so that they'll know that it's okay, that it wasn't my fault, and then I can have those support around me so that I can make those steps to change my narrative. Yeah, no, yeah, that, that's, that's really nice. Thank you for sharing. Uh, so after submitting your grant request to El Paso County, Kingdom Builders uh, was awarded $150,000 of ARPA funding. Uh, can you talk specifically about what that money has gone to oh, fund? Oh, absolutely. So it was always my desire because what we found is that we were doing addressing a lot of emergency crisis, getting them in housing right now, encouraging them to get a job, and all of those things that when you are coming out of um, that situation, you need time to heal. You mm -hmm. need time to just sit back and say, you know what, let me think about my next step rather than just pushing them out there. Yeah. So uh, we wanted to get funding to be able to provide a 12 week family life and employment readiness program. And what that program did, it allows for participants to take that pause. Um, we have a stipend that's identified. So we actually can pay them $1,000. We were paying them $1,000 a month. They would come into our um, office. We would provide th um, 12 weeks of skills. Mm -hmm. um, the first month would just identify, talk about trauma, what that looks like, whether it's um, healthy relationships, um, red flags and relationships. Well, let's talk about what domestic violence is and sexual assault and human trafficking. So we had those different identified topics. We also have brought in um, community partners like Diversus Health to kind of help us with that. We've even brought in Karen Shear to, to help with uh, um, health and cooking classes because a lot of our participants are starting over, and so a lot of them are young, and so they just mm -hmm. don't have those skills that typically some of us do have. So we want to provide that environment um, for that first month. And then the second month was work, work life balance. And what does that look like if you're starting over and you're a mom with multiple children? How does that look like? What do we do? And and then the last month is when we did the employment readiness. So having those ARPA funds, that allow us to get the funds to do that. Yeah. So we've, been, we've seen last April was our first um, session. And then we go on um, every three months. So we've this will be, we're finishing up another class here um, this month. But we've already had four um, training classes that were able to um, provide that structure. Yeah. And, and it's been, it's been working well. Mm -hmm. Um, like anything, when a person has come out, they're either ready to change their narrative or they're not. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of success, but then we also see some that, you know, just not ready at that moment. Right. But we, we are able to have that opportunity to provide that support for them. Yeah. So I, I kind of wanted to ask more about that. I mean, what, when people are going through the classes and, and learning these new things and experiencing these new things and trying to, as you said, change that narrative, right? When they get to the end of that class, let, let's first talk about those successes, right? Like what, what do you see in them over that 12 week span? Cause I, you know, I, you see them when they come in mm -hmm. and where they're at 
and you see when they go out and where right. they're at. What, what do you see specifically and what does that do for you in reaffirming that, right. th- that this is the place for you and what yeah. you need to be doing? Absolutely. What we've seen is that they've not been reoffended, So that means they haven't returned to the abuse because now they have I mean, $1,000 a month is not a lot, but if you don't have anything, it right. definitely gives you a little cushion. Mm-hmm. And so just being able to, to see the lights when they have the different topics, they're just ex- excited. I see, I pass by and I see the laughs when they're having those conversations. So they're not only just learning things, they're also creating a, another support system system that they and then they have a voice now um you know when you're in a domestic violence relationship sometimes you're dependent on the other individual that's caused you harm you really have not had an opportunity to really just experience life outside of that so those topics that we have um are really allowing them to really start dreaming beyond where they were and so as our ultimate goal is that they are able to get a job that is can take care of themselves and we we're still building relationships into being able to make sure that each one that does leave that they can then um, go into a, an employment and mm-hmm. so we've been building that up and that's kind of takes time because you have to be able to approach the right um, companies right. Um, to be able to sell them on what we're doing and getting the buy-in so that they can then say you know yeah I really want to work with or provide um, employment for the folks that are coming out of your program. Uh, are there specific uh, companies in the region that you have partnerships with to help gain employment? Or is that one of those things where you more like kind of lean into what the individual is looking mm-hmm. for and sort of try and identify? Yeah, absolutely. And so we've been leaning into because they do resumes and we know kind of where their skill sets are. And we try to encourage and, and getting that support like advocates can take them to um, different job sites if they need to go there. So they pretty much have been kind of this is where I would like to work and we've been focusing on let's get you in that particular field. Mm -hmm. But we still are trying to develop those partnerships because we realize is that when you have it, it's easier just, okay, I'll take this amount of of, of participants that you have and we continue to explore that opportunity. But we've only had, this is like I said, this is in and our fourth and it takes time to develop. um, But we're still optimistic because we were able to then this is what we were able to do. And now we're starting to see we got more funders that are saying, you know, hey, I really want to support that as well. So we, the, as we increase funding for this type of model that we've created with the ARPA funds, we, we, we definitely can see having more solidified um, part and partners with employment in the future. No, that's really nice. So uh, look at I get kind of the other side of the coin, right? As someone who goes through the program and maybe not quite ready to advance or to move on what you know what does kingdom builders offer whether it's you know sharing other services that exist outside of kingdom builders mm-hmm. or other programs that you have within you know, what sort of uh, opportunities are there for those people who after that 12 weeks they're not quite ready mm-hmm. to advance yeah absolutely so everyone doesn't go through the 12 week it's only those that may come in that's employed or underemployed mm-hmm. or they're in our safe house so we have three different program structures within kingdom builders our first one is our youth program which is our project right direction so those are for use from seven on up to we can go up to 24 in that particular program. When we get to 18 to 24, is usually we, we focus on employment and education success because they're adults. Mm-hmm. Um, with the 7 to 17, we're either providing that community-based program, which is like our mentoring program, where they, we have them come here to our location on Monday, well, on Fridays from 4 to 7, and we just kind of do the mentoring, and then we feed them, do monthly field trips, but we give them those skills and tools that they need Um to be able to overcome the obstacles that they're facing as children. Um, And we really partner with the parents as well, because on those monthly field trips, we try to make sure that the parents are going as well, because that's an opportunity to kind of the family approach of going out and and experiencing things that they may not normally do Mm -hmm. when they're, um, you know, less income is is really an area where they they struggle with. Mm -hmm. Um, Then we also have our, our school-based services, and we go into um, identify schools to be able to provide our lead, uh, youth leadership model to some of the schools that they've identified children that are kind of struggling a little bit. And so we come alongside to provide some instructions of our program to, again, as I mentioned with the community base, just give them those tools they need because they may not know what white looks like in the home because of, you know, what they've seen in there, been exposed to, and we want to give them that option. 
And then we, of course, we have our um, new beginnings programs with the Project Right Direction that works with those kiddos who are already currently experiencing um, trouble in in law. And so we try to get more of a second chance type approach to work with um, either probation or whoever their parents to see if we can provide some um, uh, instructions for them to maybe change their ways and then go back on the right track because they've kind of lost their way somewhat. Um, So that's our youth program. Um, And then our our adult program is our My Brothers and Sisters Keeper. That's where we work directly with those that come in that experience in domestic violence, sexual assault, human trafficking, or have been indirectly affected at one point, whether it was a childhood um, abuse where they've experienced that. And so we provide a lot of services doing that. And we can provide anywhere from if there is a safety issue where they are needing to get out, we literally are, we have a safe house that we've had now about three and a half, almost four years that we can get them safe. Mm-hmm. We've been able to pay for hotel stay if the safe house is full, um, being able to pay for food um, if they need food assistance. So whatever they map out in their success plan, because everyone comes in and fill out a, and do an individual success plan. That's how we model what support we provide for them, because we don't we know every individual is different. So we want to be able to meet them where they are and mm-hmm. provide them that support. Um, and so, of course, our housing program is a part of the DORP program, but it's a little different because we can do safe house. We have um, rental assistance that we can help with, deposits. We can also, um, now we just got new funding where we can actually do transitional housing, which will give them up to six months oh, wow. of housing where we can support them either in our safe, our safe house that we have currently or just their own um, assistance Mm -hmm. that they're found a place. And then we just support them up to a certain period of time. So we very um, widespread in what we can do. um, But just having those different layers allows for us to be able to support that whole person rather than just putting a bandaid on one situation. And then they never get all the others. And, And one thing I forgot to mention that we have with our youth we have some behavior health funding that we just got. So we can also now start paying for mental health therapy oh, okay. um, for those youth in that footprint that we have so that they can, because trauma brings on a lot of issues and a lot can con- manifest mental health. So we can now provide support and making sure that that therapy is attached to um, not only the, the children, but also the parents, because it's important to be, to make help a person become whole rather than just trying to, piece things together. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I like that. Thank you. Uh, so earlier you mentioned uh, some places like Diversus Health mm-hmm. or Care and Share. Uh, can you speak a, a little bit more broadly about how working with other organizations mm-hmm. in the area has benefited these programs that you're working on? Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, not one organization can do it all. Right. And so <laughs> having a community of support, what our expertise is, they may have expertise in something else. Mm -hmm. Um, So we try to partner with as many agencies as possible. We have a resource list of different agencies and what they provide. And so we've been very strategic in connecting with to be able to say, hey, or vice versa, I have a person that's experiencing domestic violence. Are you able to support them in that? We can't do it. Example, we just had a conversation with Catholic Charities, I think, It was last week one of their um, advocates was working with someone and they said, well, we can't pay for this, but if you all are able to pay for this, we can do this. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of let's see how we can support the individual and what we can do versus what they can do. And then together we can come up with a a solution to possibly help that person. But it all depends on that person and if they're ready to be helped. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so we found a, a great success in the last few years of just building those different partnerships. So as you were starting Kingdom Builders, how did you go about developing those partnerships mm-hmm. with these other organizations? Because, you know, before I got involved in uh, this specific job, I didn't really know a lot about how nonprofit organizations worked and, you know, what, what it looked like on sort of the grander scale. Right. I mean, I had heard of United Way. I had heard of, you know, uh, Salvation Army, right? right? But it didn't really know like how they operated. So when you are coming into it as a new, a brand new organization that doesn't exist anywhere else, Mm -hmm. really, how do you 
I, I don't endear is not the correct word, but like, how do you show to those other organizations who have been around for decades right. or some even century uh, over a century, right? And and show your value and right. you know the mission you have is valuable and that you can bring something uh, unique and special to the region, right? How do, you, how do you do that? Yeah, so I think and it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because we literally I started Kingdom Builders in 2013, mm-hmm. but I was also still working full time with. Fort Carson as an um, advocate on at Army Community Service. So it wasn't until 2018 that I was able to get enough funding to be able to resign from the government mm-hmm. to be able to do Kingdom Builders full time. So once I was able to do it full time, some of those connections that I did make while I was on Fort Carson as an advocate, because I went a lot of different community events, um, I had a lot of uh, co- uh, organizations that came to Fort Carson during Domestic Violence Awareness Month, where I was the one spearheading, putting it together. Mm -hmm. So I built those relationships prior to me even coming on. People knew about that organization. I would always talk about it. You know, I really want to go full time. But (laughs) one, I was able to do that in August of 2018. That's when the the magic happened. If um, (laughs) and it was literally I was able to go to these community meetings that was being that was being done during the morning time where Prior to, I couldn't attend because I was working. Right, right. And so it, it only took a small amount of time for me to do that. But then I also was on a lot of different committees. Um, mm-hmm. When our first f- funding we got was called Transforming Safety. And that was through the, the CDPHE, which is like, the, you know, a government grant. And through that funding, I built par- uh, collective bodies that were there with different things. So when we got our first funding, that was what opened the doors for others because mm-hmm. yeah, we were we were a grassroots organization, really doing the work, but didn't have any money to to be able to do it. <laughs> right. So we were able to build up our infrastructure with the first grant, and then getting our database tracking system created for us, and then we can start measuring these are who we serve. And then shortly after that, in 2019, I was able to get more funding to be able to start the the victim service, and, and everything else was history at that yeah. point. Because <laughs> then I'm developing it, I'm showing what I can do. I have measurements to measure right. and then I can really st- develop strong proposals and doing other grants and they say yes we want to support and so that's kind of how it started it wasn't a quick thing but over right. time it was what I was already doing in the first place but I just didn't have the the f- infrastructure in place right yeah right no oh, that that's fascinating I you know I've had the uh, the opportunity to speak to a number of organizations at this point and hearing the stories of like how they get started, you know, it yeah, last, last week, it, you know, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, early childhood learning centers, right. And they've been around for 120 years here in Colorado Springs. And, but you know, they still talk about their history and how they got started and how valuable it is to them. And then contrasting that with, you know, speaking with you and like, and talking about that, it's just, it's, um, it is at least to me very empowering almost to hear that to hear those stories because you know if you have a desire and you have a mission mm-hmm. there's a, there's a way to do it mm-hmm. now i you know i'm sure there are plenty of bumps along the road mm-hmm. i'm sure i'm sure you could talk about plenty that you oh, experienced absolutely absolutely but um you know it's still out there like there's yeah. still possibility like if you feel passionately about something you can find a way to do right. that and to make that your life and to, right. and to really uh, contribute to, you know, a region like El Paso County. Right. So it, it's, it's really great hearing all that. So uh, thank you for sharing. That's really cool. Of course. Um, kind of along the same lines, is there a personal story that you could share that can help demonstrate the work that kingdom builders does? Yeah, it's several stories over the years. When I think about it, I, I think one in particular, um, is, uh, I was working, um, Prior to me starting, well, I was already working with Kingdom Builders, but on another level, as I mentioned, I was working at Fort Carson, and I had a a male soldier that came through that was a victim of domestic violence, and I started working with him um, and his family, and um, he, he was my first male victim. And just seeing his um, defeat, he felt defeated because, you know, I'm a male. 
I'm a soldier. I'm this big guy and I shouldn't be going through that. But I made me realize, and then most time, because we do work with males, they're, they're victim, victims are victims yeah. uh, of crime. And so it doesn't matter if it's male or female, but just being able to see. And now we still talk on a daily basis. He's a, he got out of the military. He's a truck driver. He's not no longer with this female that caused the harm, but he's so, um, you know, appreciative. Mm-hmm of being able to have someone to be able to listen to him in his time of needs. Um, and it's just amazing to see his growth during that time period. And I, I think that's probably was like in 20, 2017, 16, or something like that. But yeah. he, he's still thriving at this point. And, yeah. and that's just one story. And then I've had a female, same thing, you know, the military community is very um, big here in Colorado. Um, and so I had an opportunity to work with both male and female. And this was a female dependent. Um, and she had three, four small children, a, a set of twins. And when she was here, she's no longer here. She's in Michigan now. But again, very defeated. And just being able to provide that support to her and understanding that you're not alone. You can do this. Um, I was able to save her life because she had gotten to the point she was about to end it. She thought about it because going, just going through the, the struggles of being um, in that situation and already dealing with your own mental health struggles. Um, but now she's, she's a homeowner now. She's moved out of the state. Um, she's no longer, she's divorced. And she has all of her children and she works in a hospital. So those are some of the, the stories that I hear and witness, and I can witness lives being changed. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, if you're ready to change your narrative, when you come through Kingdom Builders doors, we're here to support you 100%. But we can only do more than what you can do. So it's amazing just seeing the growth and how we can affect lives. And then we just had our 10-year anniversary where we had a family, a mom. I worked with the mom, the dad, and their children because they have a lot of childhood trauma years but I work with those kiddos when they were like in just starting one they were in middle school elementary school and high school and all of the, the we still stay in touch and the mom talks about how they started with us at the very beginning in our youth program and now they're adults these girls are adults and one has a baby they're doing well she's just got her first apartment so just being able to know that we are here to make a difference and help people make a difference and change it in their lives is, is, is amazing yeah that, that is amazing. And I think one of the most in, incredible things about organizations like Kingdom Builders and others that serve individuals that have to overcome trauma mm -hmm. is how you are able to take that on yourselves and, and help this individual transition from what they were into what they can be. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if I have that skill within me, but you know, how, how do you, how do you do that? If you have to like try and like filter that into an answer, like how do you do that? How do you take on that mental load that is, that must be very taxing mm -hmm. and um, I mean, go through that trauma and that grief with them and not make it your own, but mm -hmm. instead turn it into essentially power for a person to overcome it. Like, how do you, how do you do that? Right. I'm, I'm a woman of faith. So that, that's where my, my whole um, desire to be able to do what I do and not take it personally. Mm -hmm. um, but then I've been doing it for such a long time. <laughs> and so just being able to realize what I went through in my personal life, I was able to overcome a lot of adversities. I could have been a statistic where, you know, where you're a single parent or you're an African-American woman raising with majors and children, you're designed to, okay, you're going to be on the system for the rest of your life. You're just not going to be able to be successful. I was able to overcome all of those obstacles. And mm -hmm. because of that testimony in my life, that's what made me realize the desire was already there in me. And that was what my life purpose is going to be, helping others overcome that. So I'm, I'm just honored and, and blown away every time I see someone come in, and every time we have successes or any time we get new funding to be able to help more. Because I look at it as an opportunity. Okay, now we can help more people, you know, rather than, oh, my gosh, we got this funding. How are we going to do this? Or even when people come in our doors and they're just not ready right now. Yeah. We don't just shut our doors. We probably will tell them if they're in our housing and we have to remove them from the housing because of some violation they've created, you can still get other services. But unfortunately, we're going to have to remove you from there. So it's never we close the door unless that person's just refusing to do anything. Right. We're, and then if there has been times, we've had several that have 
dropped off. And then a year or so, maybe less, they come back because they realize, okay, I got the support when I was there. I just was not ready. Yeah. So when you're ready, our doors are open. But, you know, we kind of guide them through that possibility. That's, that's great. Uh, so we've talked about quite a bit, but uh, I don't know if there are any other programs uh, that the organization offers that you feel would be important for listeners to mm-hmm. know about. So we're doing a lot more of, in 2024 of educating the community. We've always had that in our footprint of because education is so important. That's the way to when you know better, you do better. When you are able to get education on particular topics, then you know how to support others. So in 2024 is our impact of making sure that we provide more education opportunities. April is um, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, so we're going to be having a lot of um, educational th- um, classes where people can come in, do our open house, get support, and we may have a different kind of events there. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. This year, last year, or this year, we had our first um, two-day domestic violence conference, and it was amazing. Um, and we have already gotten funding to, to host it again. Awesome. So it'll be on October the 11th and 12th. We haven't found a location yet. We're going to change it from where we have it. But that's a time for two days of, of education and mm-hmm. also empowerment because we want people – We domestic violence is a social is, issue. It's very sadistic, and people need to know what it is and how you can support a family member or yourself or even the person that's causing the harm because they have learned that behavior. And so the more we educate the community about those topics, the more that we can see changes and then also getting the support that the community needs to be able to start. So we can start seeing these numbers decrease even more. Yeah, no, that, that's really great. Uh, so for those people who may be seeking services, how can they go about obtaining those from Kingdom Builders? Um, absolutely. So our website is uh, www.kbflc.org. And we act, we have a chat feature on there. It has all of our office hours. It has our location on there. And it talks about all of the services that we provide. And it even has links where you can literally apply for the same as a housing assistance or you need to get safe in a safe house. So you can do all of that on our, our, our website. But then you can also, we have walk-in hours. Um, this, right now, the winter months, we're open from 8 to 4, Monday through Friday. And our walk-in hours have changed a little bit. But all of that's on our website. We have social media that you can contact us. And then we have a 24-hour crisis line. So if there's something that's happening after 4 o'clock and you really need to get some support, um, we have a, a number, 719-464-4647. Yes, 4647. That's our number for our crisis line. And that's a tw- we have staff that's on call 24-7. Um, so, yeah, there, there is help. We're able to help. And if we can help you, we'll definitely guide you in the right direction. Great. And then for people who, you know, are listening and they're like, oh, this sounds like something I want to be a part of. Like, I I know I can lend help here. Uh, How can people get involved and volunteer with Kingdom Builders? Yeah, absolutely. We have volunteer opportunities all the time. You can get trained to be a volunteer victim advocate, help with the on-call phone. We also have administrative support. We do a lot of community outreach events. So we have community outreach volunteers. So there's such and then also working with our youth. So there's a lot of opportunities. Again, you can go to our website that we have a volunteer uh, link on there that you can apply. Um, and then it'll you'll be able to kind of take the next steps from there. Um, and then we also are very excited. We just got news last night that we're about to close on our second safe house. Oh, um, congratulations. And thank you. And so <laughs> it, we um, are excited about that. Of course, be, all of our safe houses are confidential so I can't give the address but we're looking for people to sponsor a room to actually help us um, decorate and then get the the items that would be needed um, for families to to be able to have that set up because our goal is to be able to get the house by Christmas is our goal Um, and then there's also opportunities we have a wish list where we have we do immediate needs where people can buy toiletry items, they can buy body wash. So we have a list that we send out on Fridays, which is our wish list Fridays of all the different items that we need. So there's so many ways to be able to give of your time, talent, or treasures when working and helping support kingdom builders. And we love it, any support we can get. Great. And then uh, before we close out here, I just want to give you an opportunity to add anything else uh, that you think would be important for people to know. Yeah. Just knowing that when someone, if it's the, them or someone they know that's experiencing domestic violence or sexual assault, that that person is not at fault. 
Um, they need support from others in order for them to change their narrative. They need to know that they can get safe. And so if you are that person or if you know someone that is, we encourage them to be able to seek help because once they get out, we want them to stay out mm -hmm. and be able to, to start a life outside of, because eventually we want everyone that's experiencing that to be thrivers. Right. Oh, very good. Well, uh, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate you taking the time today and for all the work that you do uh, here at Kingdom Builders. So thanks for having me. Thank you. If you're interested in listening to additional episodes of Beyond the Dais, be sure to look for us on Podbean or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.